All right, folks, so this is the first of a couple of videos uh, that are going to be going to teach you how to classify fingerprints um, as whorls. In uh, some of our earlier discussion, uh, we talked about uh, the three primary fingerprint patterns. Uh, we know for sure that the, the patterns are arches, loops, and whorls. Um, and we know in terms of distribution that less than 5% of fingerprints are arches. Uh, the majority of fingerprints, 60 to 65 percent of them are loops, but about a third of all fingerprints in the area of about 30 to 35 percent of fingerprints are whorls. So we're going to talk in this uh, video um, about how to determine if a fingerprint is in fact uh, one of those whorl patterns. Um, so what is a whorl? Uh, a whorl is a fingerprint pattern that consists of one or more ridges that form a circuit and are surrounded by two deltas. A circuit is, is kind of a circular formation. So if we look at this fingerprint here, you can see that there, there's more than one, actually. There's several. There's three or four or five different ridges that form this circle or circle pattern in the middle. If we look at this fingerprint also, we can see that on the left-hand side, there are two type lines and a delta here on the left side. And on the right side, we can see that there are two type lines and a delta on the right-hand side. So this fingerprint definitely fits the description of what a whorl is. It's got uh, a few different ridges, uh, certainly more than one, that form a circular circuit pattern in the middle, and it does have two deltas. So this is definitely an example of a whorl. Uh, if you look at that fingerprint, one of the things you might notice, if I go back to that print, uh, whorls have a tendency to look a lot like uh, a target, like a target you might shoot at at a, a gun range or an archery range. So when you're looking at a, a set of fingerprints, you can usually pick out the whorls pretty quickly because, again, they have these circle or circuit formations in the middle, which have a tendency to look kind of like the target you might shoot at. Now, about this circuit, it's important to understand that the circuit that's found in the middle of a del uh, sorry, in the middle of a whorl that sits between the two deltas doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Uh, a circuit can be circular. Uh, or it could be a spiral, or it could be an oval, or ellipse, or any other variant of a circle. So, uh, for example, looking at these patterns here, the circuit formation in this whorl, and this is a whorl, we have two deltas surrounded by this circuit. This is a spiral as opposed to a circle, whereas in this whorl we have an oval. This one is, is circular, whereas in this one, which is also a whorl, we don't even have a full circle. We simply have a recurve here on the left, and a recurve here on the right, but these, these two recurves form uh, an incomplete circuit, yet still a circuit, so this is still a whorl. So a couple uh, important things to remember about uh, defining what a circuit is. Now, in terms of whorls, there are four uh, basic types of whorls. The most common, the one you're going to see most often, is the plain whorl. Uh, next, we have the central pocket whorl, or sometimes called the central pocket loop whorl. We have the double loop whorl, and then we have what are called accidental whorls. So there's four different varieties of whorls. If you remember in loops, we had ulnar loops and radial loops, but with whorls we have four different types, plain whorls, central pocket whorls, double loop whorls, and accidental whorls. In terms of their distribution, the most common is the plain whorl. Plain whorls uh, if you do have a whorl, uh, a little over 70% of all whorls are plain whorls, so those are the ones you're going to see most often. Uh, secondly and thirdly, you're going to see the double loop whorl and the central pocket loop whorl, about 13% each um, make up the distribution of those types of whorls. And then less than 3% or around 3% of whorls are going to be what's called an accidental whorl. So they're not very common, you're going to see them occasionally. So these are three examples of what would be considered plain whorl. So what is a plain whorl? Uh, a plain whorl consists of one or more ridges which make a complete circuit and are surrounded by two deltas. Now, if you draw an imaginary line between those two deltas, that imaginary line will cross at least one recurving ridge within the itern pattern area um, of the, the fingerprint. So if we look at these three fingerprints, if we find the deltas on each side, let's look at this fingerprint on the left. If we find the delta here on the left, and we find the delta here on the right, if we draw this imaginary line between them, we can see that that imaginary line definitely touches or crosses some of these ridges that form 
a complete circuit or circle. So that's what makes this a plane roll. And you see the same for this fingerprint here in the middle and also this fingerprint here in the right. Again, if we draw an imaginary line between the two deltas, that imaginary line either touches or crosses one or more of these ridges that form this circle or circuit pattern. So here is an example of another plane whorl. Here we have on the left side, we have a delta, so we have our type lines, and then we have our delta. Here on the right side, we have our second delta, we have our type lines and our delta. And if we draw an imaginary line there, connecting them, we can see that there's certainly more than one. There's several ridges that form these circle or circuit patterns, and certainly this imaginary line crosses one or more. In fact, it crosses multiple of those ridges, so this is what we call a plain whorl. In terms of our notation, when we, when we classify whorls, um, we're going to write a W at the bottom portion of our fingerprint card underneath the whorl, but in the top right-hand corner, we're going to write the type of whorl, and in this case, we're going to write the letter P, indicating that the whorl is a plane whorl. We'll talk about what this letter O means in a moment, but for now, the P means it's a plane whorl. Looking at this whorl, this is also an example of a plane whorl. Again, has two deltas, so here's our type lines and our delta. Here's our other type line and our delta. If we connect those two type lines with an imaginary line there, we can certainly see that it crosses or at least touches one of those ridges forming that circuit. So again, this is also a plane whorl indicated by the P uh, in the top right-hand corner. All right, now here's a different type of whorl. This is what we call a central pocket whorl. So it has two deltas just like before. So we have type lines on the left, and then we have our delta. Here are our type lines here and here, and so here's our delta. But notice when we connect those two deltas with our imaginary line, it doesn't cross any of the ridges here in the middle which form those circuit patterns. And because that imaginary line doesn't touch any of those ridges, it can't be a plain world. It's going to be what we call a central pocket loop world or a central pocket world. So here are three examples of central pocket worlds. Again, the definition of a central pocket world is one uh, at least one, sorry, consists of at least one recurving ridge uh, or an obstruction at a right angle to the line of flow with two deltas between which when imaginary line is drawn, no recurving ridge within the inner pattern area is cut or touched. So basically, it's a fingerprint pattern that has two deltas. The difference, though, between the central pocket loop whorl and the plane whorl, though, is when we draw an imaginary line between the two deltas, that imaginary line does not either touch or cross any of the ridges that form that circular or circuit pattern in the middle of the print. And you can see when looking at these three fingerprints, they definitely all have two deltas each. They definitely have circle or circuit patterns in the middle, but that imaginary line doesn't cross or cut across any of those circuits, and so this is a central pocket loop world. Now, when we designate a central pocket world in terms of our notation, uh, on our card, we're going to write a W underneath the fingerprint, but in the top right-hand corner, this time we're going to write the letter C. So we're going to put a C in the top right-hand corner. Again, I'll tell you what this letter I means a little bit later, but the C designates this world as a central pocket loop world. So here again we see a central pocket loop world. Here is our type line and our type line. So here's our delta here on the right. We have our type lines and our delta. And then when we connect those two deltas, we can see that this imaginary line does not cross our spiral shaped circuit here in the middle. And so since it doesn't cross it, it can't be a plain world. So in this case, we're going to have a central pocket loop world. All right, now, the next variety is what's called a double loop whorl. Double loop whorls um, are, look exactly like they sound. They're basically two loops that are kind of wrapping around each other. Remember, the requirements of a loop is that it has a sufficient recurve, and it has a delta, and it has a ridge count. A double loop whorl is actually a fingerprint that is two complete loops. So it has two different sets of recurves, and it has two different deltas. So if we look closely at this fingerprint, we can see that we have one set of recurve here. So here's one sufficient recurve. And if we look down here, we have another sufficient recurve. 
we can see here on the left here is our type line our type line and our delta on the right we have a type line a type line and our delta so it has two deltas and two sets of recurving ridges so it's basically two loops together so this is actually not classified as a loop it's actually classified as a double loop whorl right so there's our one set of recurve here's our other recurve two sets of deltas so we have what's called a double loop whorl now if you look closely at this double loop whorl uh, a quick identifier when you're looking at a set of prints uh, a plane whorl looks like a, a target right that you might shoot at with your bow and arrow a double loop whorl if you look at it notice that it has a tendency to to resemble a symbol the the chinese symbol of the yin and the yang uh, and so when you're looking at a set of fingerprints you can usually pick out double loop whorls pretty quickly because you can see that unique um, symbol there here's another example of a double loop whorl here we have uh, a sufficient recurve recurving back to the left here we have another recurve recurving back to the right on our right hand side we have a type line and a type line and then there's our delta and on the left hand side we have a type line and a type line in our delta so we have two deltas and we have two sets of recurves so basically we have two loops that are kind of wrapping around each other and so again this fingerprint is called a double loop whorl in terms of our notation on our card, we would write a W underneath the fingerprint indicating it's a whorl. And then the top right hand side of our card, we would write a lowercase d indicating that it's a double loop whorl. And again, we're going to talk about what that letter I means next to it a little bit later. But for now, we would write W underneath it because it's a whorl, and we'd write a lowercase d indicating it's a double loop whorl. Here's another example of a double loop whorl. Again, here is our recurve. Here's one recurve. Here's another recurve. So we have two recurving, two sets of recurving ridges. We have our delta here on the right. Here's our delta here on the left. So we have two deltas, two sets of recurves. Again, this is a double loop whorl. And so again, we would write whorl underneath, or W underneath, indicating it is a whorl. And then specifically, we'd write a lowercase d in the top right hand corner, indicating it's a double loop whorl. All right, now. Uh, a couple of special rules when it comes to double loop whorls. Um, whenever are the two recurves are uh, the same ridge, so we have what's called an S-type loop whorl, where we have a recurve that recurves around again and then recurves back. So we have this kind of S shape here. Whenever you have an S-type loop whorl, these are actually not classified as double loop whorls. They're actually classified as plane whorls. So you have to be careful there. So when we're writing our classification, again, we'd write a W underneath the print, but instead of classifying this as a double loop whorl, this is actually uh, still a plane whorl. The other one is uh, whenever we have sets of recurves that interlock with each other. So notice here we have this recurve and it inter actually interlocks with this other recurve. Not quite the S shape, but it's interlocking recurves. Again, when we have interlocking recurves, again, we do not classify them as true double loop whorls. What we do instead is we classify these as plane whorls. So a couple small details to remember. You're not going to see these very often, uh, but when you do see them, uh, you might see what you think at first is a double loop whorl. It's actually a, a plain whorl, and if you look closely, you'll see that it's either one of these ones that is either interlocking recurves or is that S-shaped recurve, in which case they're actually plain whorls and not double loop whorls according to the rule. All right, fourth type of whorl. These are the weird whorls. These are the ones you're not going to see very often, and these are what we call an accidental whorl. Accidental whorls are usually a combination of at least two different patterns. For example, uh, you might have a double loop whorl in combination with uh, a loop. So looking at this fingerprint, actually we have three sets of recurves. We have a set of recurve here. So here's one recurve. Here's another recurve here. And then here's a third recurve here. So what we really have is a double loop whorl and a loop. So it's actually two different fingerprints combined. And so that's, we actually refer to those as accidental whorls because we actually have, in this case, three deltas. We have a delta here, we have a type line and a delta here, and then we even have a delta over here. So we have three recurves, three deltas. And so actually this fingerprint, because it's a combination of a double loop whorl and a loop, actually is considered an accidental whorl. So there's our three recurves 
And I also showed you where the three deltas are. So this is actually classified as an accidental whirl. So here are three examples of accidental whirls. Again, the definition of an accidental whirl is one that consists of a combination of two different types of patterns, uh, with the exception of the plane arch, with two or more deltas or a pattern which possesses some of the requirements for two or more different types, or a pattern which conforms to none of the definitions. So basically, it's, it's any fingerprint that combines two or more of the other types, or if it's just a really weird fingerprint that doesn't really match any of the definitions of an arch, a loop, or a whirl, we by default will call it an accidental whirl. So here's another example similar to the one I showed you before. Here we have a, a recurving ridge this way. We have a recurving ridge this way. We have a recurving ridge this way. We have a delta and a delta. So this one would be an accidental whirl. Uh, here we have a, a, a recurving loop here. Here we have an upthrusted tented arch. So we have this tenet arch in com combination with this loop. Again, a combination of two or more prints. And so it's going to be a, an accidental whirl. Well, here's a couple of examples. So here we have what uh, would be a combination of a, a central pocket whirl. So here we have our circle formation. Here we have our loop formation. So here's our circuit. Here's our loop. Two deltas, delta here on the left, delta on the right. And so this is going to be an accidental whirl. Now, in terms of our notation on our card, if we do find an accidental whirl, like all the other whirls, we're going to write a W underneath the, the print. So we put a W on the bottom. But here on the right-hand side, remember, we put a P for a plane whirl. We wrote a C for a central pocket loop whirl. We put a lowercase d for a double loop whirl. Well, once an accidental, we actually write X. And the reason we don't do an A is we don't want to confuse this with an arch. So A's are usually used to refer to arches, so we don't want to use any confusion, so we're going to put an X there indicating it's an accidental whirl. Here's another example of an accidental whirl. Here we have a loop, so here we have a recurving ridge. Here we have a spiral shaped circuit in the middle. We also have a, a, a delta and a delta. So again, we have the combination of what would be uh, a plain whirl and a loop. So we're going to call this an accidental. So again, in terms of our notation, we would put a W underneath the print, and then we would write an X in the top right-hand corner. So those are our four different types of whirls. Remember, about 30 to 35% of fingerprints are whirls. Uh, whirls can either be plain whirls, uh, central pocket loop whirls, uh, double loop whirls, or accidental whirls. Uh, and in this next video, uh, the one after this one, we're going to talk about what that other letter in the top right-hand corner means. Uh, for example, you probably saw central pocket loop whirls that said C and then I, or C and then N, C and then an M. Uh, that I, that O, or that M refers to something called uh, the, the whirls tracing, which we're going to talk about in our next video.